here. Welcome back to my Country Craft Corner. How in the world are you guys doing today? It is so good to see you again and thank you so, so much for stopping back by to see what I'm up to. And what I'm up to today is my third Vlogmas little video here. So all I'm gonna be doing today is three little bows. I'm gonna be doing a round bow like I put on Stacy's gift and the last one out of this beautiful ribbon. I, wanted, I want this ribbon to stand all by itself. Bobby from perpetualribbons.com sent me this ribbon and she sent me another one of the ribbons that I'm gonna be using in this. Uh, she sent me the squirrel ribbon. And I'm going to make it to put, on a, to put on a gift and to give a gift of a funky bow with a gift. So I'm not sure which gift it's going on yet, but we'll, wrap, we'll match the wrapping paper to the bow whenever we get to that. I might have to buy wrapping paper because I'm not sure I have any that would match that. But I thought that would make a pretty eight loop funky bow out of the six or eight loop out of these two ribbons. And for also from Bobby at perpetualribbons.com, she also sent me this as I, and I made one funky bow for my own decor out of this snowman and buffalo check. And then she also sent me this beautiful gray with snowflake ribbon. Y'all, is this gonna make a stunning funky bow, a nine loop funky bow out of this one? So three funky, or two funky bows and just a regular round bow with this because I think this needs to stand all by itself. I think it's just beautiful. Wouldn't it be beautiful with gold foil paper? Just gold foil paper. Would that not, not look just beautiful? So a round bow with this one, an eight loop funky bow with these two, and then a nine loop funky bow with these. Okay, uh, first thing I wanna do is cut up my ribbon. So I'll be back once my ribbon is cut up, okay? Y'all don't need to sit and watch me cut ribbon. So I will be back in just a few minutes once I get that done. Okie dokie, I've got one bow already cut out and ready to go. Let me get a gold pipe cleaner out of here for this. One pipe cleaner. And now we're gonna make, like I said, an eight loop funky bow. I have four ribbons or four strips of ribbon out of each kind of ribbon cut at 22 inches long. All I'm gonna do to start the pattern is fold one piece of ribbon in half, and I'm gonna to go to about five and a half inches on my measuring tape here. And I'm gonna pinch it together right at that, at that point. And then I'm gonna to go to the back tail and I'm going to twist it around. So that gives us a five and a half inch tail and about a five to five and a half inch or five and a half inch loop and about a five and a half inch tail. Okay, get the next one. After pinching and everything, it takes up a little room to pinch, you know? So we're gonna fold this in half and we're gonna go to five and a half inches and we're gonna point that loop up from center, just like we did the first one. Center being my thumb, center of the bow. Picture my thumb as the center of the bow. Go to that back tail and twist it to bring the right side together. Now these are gonna, the, these tails very well might get, you know, messed up and, and, and turned around and everything else, but we're gonna start them facing the correct direction. Okay, here we go. So that's our pattern, two up. And now we're gonna uh, start our pattern. We're gonna go fold it in half. We're gonna go to five and a half inches and we're gonna point that ribbon down from center. So the pattern will be one of each ribbon, of each loop pointed up, and then the same ribbon, one of each, with the loop pointed down from center. And that's the way we're gonna go through the whole bow until we get it made. Five and a half inches, pinch it together, pinch it in accordion it in there side by side by side, y'all. And there we have two up, two down. We have to go through the pattern two more times because we have four pieces of ribbon, two of each left. So five and a half inches, pinch it together right at that point with that loop pointed up from center, just like that. 
and twist. And now I want to grab this and I'm going to pull it out. I don't want it to be hugely long because this will go on a gift, but oh, I don't know. I'm just eyeballing it, you guys. I'm not even measuring. across the top, bring the bottom of the pipe cleaner around the bottom and the top of the pipe cleaner around the top. I'm going to leave the pipe cleaner long too so that we can tape the pipe cleaner onto the box and they can use this bow for something else in their house, whoever we give it to. So pinch it together and oh, twist, 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 twist. And there we have an eight loop funky bow with two tails. Now, the most important part, <laughs> I can hear you guys saying it, the most important part, that one got a little long on me, of any bow is the fluffing. So do take some time and turn it around and I'm gonna separate out the tails, pull the loops toward the front of the bow and I'm going to do some fluffing. Look at that. Cute as a button. Look how pretty that is. Oh my goodness. I think somebody will be happy to get that. So I'm just going to cut the two tails. Uh, let's see. I think I'll cut them with the tails. Just like that. And we can always cut them up if necessary when we go to wrap the gift. But is that not pretty? That's pretty. Yay. Okay, there's one eight loop funky bow. Okay, let me cut some more ribbon. Well, let's do our round bow next. Let's do the round bow kind of in the middle of the two. Let's go ahead and do this with this beautiful, beautiful ribbon. Oh my goodness. Okay, you guys, we're gonna make a round bow out of this beautiful ribbon that Bobby at PerpetualRibbons.com gave me. I'll be honest with you, I made a bigger bow. I did not care for how it looked, so I pulled it out. So I have a bunch of ribbon off the bolt here that I'm gonna use of this ribbon. And how we're gonna do this, we start this the same way I start my tiered bow. I just pull, make a loop, and I kind of eyeball how big I want all the loops for this bow to be. It's not going to be tiered. It's not going to get bigger as it goes. It's going to be all the same. I want them just a smidge bigger. Well, I would say about like that. And I'm eyeballing this. You all can measure if you like. I'm just going to eyeball it and go with it. So then I overlap. I pull it up, pull the ribbon up, and fold it over and overlap it a bit so that when you fluff, you don't pull it apart. And then you pinch it together right about at that point. Okay, making those loops about the same size. I'm gonna make a bit of a bigger loop in this bow. Instead of just around my forefinger, I kind of flounced it out a little bit just to make it a little bit bigger. Accordion it in there. And I'm gonna twist, bringing the right side up. And I'm gonna just make a few more loops, just right at the same size. And the ribbon will, and I can do it on this side, the ribbon will be pulled out to the, you know, automatically fed the way you need it to be fed, just the way this bow is made. Just be sure that you twist and bring that right side up. 
and you try to make all of your loops the same size. This is a little bit difficult to work with because I already had it made up, but I'm gonna make it work, don't worry. Plug it in down there and twist. And then That gives us three loops on each side of center. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple more. And I didn't even hardly have to twist that. It got twisted in the making of it, didn't it? Okay. more. So that leaves us with one tail there. And then I had cut this off of the other one, so I'm just going to go ahead and add this in as, and we'll make three tails. Just like that. My gold. My planer, put it through that loop and pull it around the bottom. I went through that last loop there, which is fine. And around the top, use this hand as resistance and twist, 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 twist. From there, we should have a pretty round. So, again, take time to fluff. Nobody taught me how to make this bow, you guys. So, I don't have this bow. I just figured out how to make it myself. So, I, you know, I had, nobody inspired me to do this. <laughs> I just kind of did it one day. And if you have a bit of sturdier ribbon, you can make the loops longer, but this, this ribbon is beautiful, but when I made the loops really long, it looked spindly. And I don't like a spindly bow, that's just me. It looks much prettier when it's more compact like this. Look at that, that is one beautiful bow. Let me do something with the tails. I have three. So let's do the ends, kind of posing angles like that. Oops, I went too short on that one. And then just do a dovetail in the middle. Here we go. And that is one pretty, pretty bow. Yay. All right. So there's a funky bow, eight loop funky bow, and then this turned out to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, what, nine, two, four, six, eight, nine, nine loop round bow. Okay, now let's make a nine loop funky bow. And you'll see the difference, you have a lot more tails. And this will be a much more tailored bow than the funky bow will be. This is much more tailored, if you will. All right, so here we go. Let me cut me some of this ribbon. I'll be right back. I'm gonna cut three of each at about 22 inches long. Okie dokie, you guys, I'm back. And I'm ready to go ahead and get started making a nine loop funky bow. Now, as you saw, I cut three strips of each type of ribbon at 22 inches long. And I'm gonna make the loops about five and a half inches long each. And this is a nine loop funky bow. I have a cheat sheet that I that is always linked in my videos down in the description. Uh, it will take you to a PDF of my funky bow cheat sheet and you can print it off and read the directions out if you, if you like to do it that way. Uh, that way you always have it at your fingertips. I have it in one of my blogs linked below for sure. Uh, let me mention again that all of the ribbon that I've used, save for one, save for the Pipberry ribbon over there, all of the rest of the ribbon, all three of these, this beautiful ribbon and the squirrel ribbon, 
were all from perpetualribbons.com. Telling you guys, I highly, highly, highly recommend Bobby, B-O-B-B-I, Bobby at perpetualribbons.com. You cannot go wrong with her ribbons. She's a lovely, lovely lady, sweet to talk to. She loves talking to you if you want to call her up and give her a chat. She loves to talk with you. Tell her I sent you, would you? <laughs> and she is a lovely, 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 lovely lady. And she's been so generous in gifting me with some beautiful ribbon. And after Christmas, wait till you see what she gave me, you guys. I'll show you that after Christmas. But for now, I'm going to make a nine-loop funky bow. And I'm not sure whether I'll keep this or whether I'll give the give this away. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I might like to keep it. I, I like to give things away for sure, but sometimes I really like this. So I don't know. Five and a half inches. Pinch it together right at that point. Same thing. Go to that back tail and twist that around. This is beautiful ribbon. Oh my goodness. So thick and pretty and beautiful and wired. So with the nine loop funky bow, I like to change directions of my loop every time I add a loop into this bow. So I'm gonna twist that loop down from my thumb, down from center, my thumb being the center of the bow. I'm gonna go to that back tail and I wanna twist. And we're gonna go through this pattern of ribbon. Look how perfectly this matches, you guys. Oh my goodness, and she even said on here, look, it matches perfect. <laughs> she wrote that on, on the roll, <laughs> and it does, whoops, it does, sorry about that. It matches perfectly. So go to five and a half inches, and this time I want to point that loop up from center, just like that, and that's our pattern. We're gonna keep up the pattern all the way through the bow. We're gonna start the pattern of different patterns over again and fold it in half and go to five and a half inches and then we're going to twist that loop down from center and we're going to go to the back ribbon and twist Here we go with the buffalo check fold it right in half go to five and a half inches Point that loop up from center this time. Accordion it in side by side by side. And let that ribbon scooch back into the crook of your finger, you guys. I'm not holding it super tight. My hand is not cramping like it was in that bit round bow. It's not cramping in this bow because I'm just letting the ribbon slip back into the crook of my finger. And I'm not, I'm not squeezing it super duper tight. Five and a half inches, turn that loop down from center accordion it in there, go to the back tail and twist. Three more times we start the pattern of different types of ribbon. Again, fold it in half, five and a half inches. I'm gonna turn that this way so the snowman is standing up. Accordion it in there, side by side by side. Loop. Go to that back tail and twist. Two more, five and a half inches. Turn it down from center this time, flipping that. Flipping it every time, the different direction, opposite direction of the time before. Twist, and then one more. And five and a half inches, and accordion it in there. And twist that back tail and then I have one big long strip of buffalo check. I'm going to fold it right in half. We're going to have two tails on this bow and I'm going to just accordion that in, add it in. That'll give us two tails. Okay, let me grab a piece of silver pipe cleaner, lay it right over the top, pull the top around the top, bottom around the bottom, <laughs> top around the top. Use this hand that you're holding the ribbon shut with as resistance and pinch and twist, 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 twist. Alrighty, you guys, I'm sorry. I had a phone call come in and, and I sat here and I fluffed this bow out while I was talking on the phone. I'm so sorry. I use my phone for my video camera, so there we go. But anyway, there is this beautiful 
Beautiful, beautiful funky bow. Did that not turn out pretty? And I'm just gonna leave the tails as is right now until I figure out what I wanna do with this. I don't know that I'll put this on a gift. Chris, Chris just came walking through here and I said, these are for gifts, for you to put on gifts because he does most of the wrapping, if I'm honest. He said, why do you wanna put these on gifts? They're really pretty. And I said, yeah, I know. I said, they are really pretty, so anyway. Hey everyone, I'm morphing in here. Actually, this is, <laughs> I am all discombobulated. <laughs> ah, let's try that again. Hi y'all, I am morphing in here with some more footage of me making a couple more bows. Uh, I had my whole video edited and ready to go up and then I realized that really is, wasn't a bow extravaganza. Even though it was like a mini bow extravaganza, I wanted to do a tiered bow for you. And I wanted to do a funky bow all out of the same ribbon, just to show you how pretty a funky bow can be out of the same ribbon. So that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to do that and show you how to do that. So let me just, uh, I'm telling you, you guys, Oh my goodness. It is just like, you know, one of those weeks for me. But I'm gonna do this and then I should easily be able to morph this footage into my uh, existing video footage and bring you guys a little bit more than what I had made there. Okay, dokie, you guys. Here I am with 10 strips of the same ribbon. Isn't that pretty? I love this plaid ribbon. I love a plaid especially a Christmas plaid, I think it's so pretty. These are all cut at 22 inches long and I'm going to make a 10 loop funky bow. So all you do, honest to goodness, I'm going to do a pattern of two up, two down, two up, two down, and go all the way through this bow at five and a half inches. I'm gonna go ahead and do my bow loops at five and a half inches. And I will go ahead and flip that la that back tail around. For one thing, it brings the right side up. This really doesn't look like it, but it really does have a right and a wrong side. Uh, also, it helps to separate the tails a little bit. So I'm just gonna work my way through this bow, like I said, two up, two down, accordioning in the ribbon in, side by side by side, allowing that ribbon to slide back into the crook of my finger. And now this time, two down from center, my thumb being the center of the bow. And twist. Oops. Just fold it right in half. Go to five and a half inches. Twist that bow down, or that loop down from center. Now I'm gonna go ahead and speed through the rest of this bow because you can see my pattern. I'm gonna start again going up from center with the next two loops, the next two down, the next two up, and so on until I run out of ribbon. And as I said, I have 10 strips of ribbon. So this is gonna be a nice kind of bulky, funky bow. And I am gonna cut another long piece and we're gonna have a couple of tails on it too. So I will be back when I'm ready to tie this bow together. The doorbell's ringing. <laughs> oh my goodness. We've had so many deliveries today. It's been pretty crazy. It's Christmas time. Okay, y'all. Chris tells me that I need to learn how to put my phone into airplane mode, which I know how to do, but I never remember to do it when I'm videoing and somebody videoed or called me and turned off my phone and I was doing my funky bow. So I finished my 10 loop funky bow, look at that, and I added two beautiful tails to it. And then I fluffed it, and as I was fluffing it, I was telling you, look how pretty this funky bow looks with, all, with it all done in the same uh, ribbon. I love a plaid ribbon. I, I don't know how far I had gotten, but I had also mentioned that, you know, let your tails fly up and in between your, your loops, you all. It makes your bow look fuller and prettier, I think, and it, it just, it's stunning. I think that's just a stunning bow. And also, another thing I mentioned, if I, 
I'll have to do some fancy editing if I've already mentioned this or if I got that on camera. But I wanted to mention Sheila over there at At Home with Sheila. If you guys haven't seen her yet or checked her channel out, check her out. She just made a beautiful funky bow topper the other day uh, and put it on top of a gorgeous red lantern that she had found at Home Goods, and it was shaped like a star, and it was absolutely gorgeous. I encourage you to go over there and check her out. She is such a sweet Southern lady and has a sweet spirit, and I think y'all would love her for those of you who might not have, have checked her channel out yet. Sheila, at Home with Sheila, check her out. And she just did a beautiful, beautiful Christmas lantern shaped like a star with a funky bow topper. It's absolutely beautiful. So, but anyway, here's my funky bow, all made out of one ribbon. And I'm fixing to make you another bow. I'm gonna make two more bows actually in this video because my camera turned off. So I'm going to teach you how to make a bow just like this that I just got done making. While I thought I was, vid uh, uh, while I thought I was videoing, when I really wasn't, uh, this is what I call a little tiered bow. And this is, you know, a, a small bow. You can make them bigger if you have bigger ribbon or you want to add more loops. You can make them bigger. Uh, but this is just a cute little accent bow. Look how pretty that is. One of you guys had given me, actually I'm gonna make one out of this because I'm gonna get me some buffalo check and we're gonna do a funky bow out of this and buffalo check. Would that not be gorgeous? So I am gonna make show you how to make a tiered bow, but I'll use this ribbon because then I'll do a funky bow. I'll probably put you into fast motion, but I want you all to see a funky bow made with this ribbon and the buffalo check. But anyway, let's learn how to do a little tiered bow like this. I'm gonna have lots of bows for my, uh, <laughs> for my packages, aren't I? Okay, I'll get back to this. Let's do a tiered bow out of this. Let me get a pipe cleaner. Okay. Let's do a tiered bow. Hold the end of your ribbon in your non-dominant hand. I am right-handed, so my non-dominant hand is my left hand. Make one loop and picture just about how big you want your first tier of loops to be. So I turn, pulled that over to myself and I want the first tier to be about that big. And I left myself a little bit of room, see that? And I wanna make a loop, pull it up from the roll side and kind of overlap that little section there. So that way when I go to fluff this bow, it's not going to pull apart, okay? And then you wanna twist it and bring the right side up like that. Twist it around your forefinger. I'm gonna make this one a little bit looser than just, sometimes I make them really tight around my forefinger. Make this one a little looser. And then you're gonna grab it from underneath. See that? Grab it from underneath and accordion that underneath side, the underneath part together and pinch it all together. And there are your first two loops in your tiered bow. So let's start for the second tier. And you don't want your second, each subsequent tier, you don't want that those loops to be any longer than a half an inch longer than the loop before it. See that? I don't want it any more than about a half an inch longer. Okay, and the ribbon is gonna be fed out to the way you need it to be fed automatically. Okay, and this side we're gonna come over here and we're not gonna make it any more than about a half an inch longer. Just lay it up underneath there and then accordion it in. And this you can kind of pile underneath one another. Twist it, bring the right side up again. We're gonna do four loops on either side of center. So this is a four loop tiered bow. Different than how I you know, explain the funky bow, but this is a four loop tiered bow. Okay, and twist and just come over here. Again, I'm eyeballing this. You do not have to measure. Trust me, the wired ribbon is very, very forgiving, you guys. You can make it look beautiful, trust me, if you get one a little, you know, a little bit longer than the other. It's okay. Don't beat yourself up. Okay, here's the last loop, last tier, just a little bit longer. And, you know, it's obviously tearing larger as we go down, you know. One more. 
And I'm going to have three tails, so I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to grab it from behind. See that? Pull it up. So the right side is up underneath there. And pinch it in there. That way you'll have one, two, and then three tails. Cut that off of there. Okay? Put your pipe cleaner. Put your pipe cleaner through the loop. Not through your thumb ring. I do it every time. And then kind of lift your thumb if you can. Lift your thumb and, and hold that pipe cleaner down. And pull the bottom around the bottom and the top around the top. Use your hand as a resistance just like we do with the funky bow. Hold it, pull against it, and twist. Twist, twist, and twist this a good many times. Twist the bow, twist the ribbon. You don't want it coming apart, okay? Now that, you know, it doesn't look like much yet. And, you know, the most important part about making any bow, I don't care what kind of bow you're making. I don't care if it's just a two-loop, two-tailed bow. You want to fluff, 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 fluff. That's what makes these bows come to life. Don't be afraid to fiddle around with it. Don't be afraid to yank on it. If you've tied it tight, it's okay. It's not gonna go anywhere, you know? Fool with it till it's pretty to your eyes. Isn't that pretty? You can see that it gets a little, it's a little smaller at the top and gets a little bit bigger as we go. If you wanna make the bows, the loops, longer than a half an inch between the loops, you sure can do that. You can tweak this and make it your own. Don't be afraid to do that either, y'all. Don't be afraid. It's not, you, there's no right or wrong, re I just am giving you a template to go by. And I've been making this bow literally for 35 years, six years. So usually the way I do these tails is I cut, just like I did that round bow, I cut the uh, side, oh boy, strips at an angle. And then I do the middle one in a dovetail. Just like that. Isn't that pretty? That's a pretty little bow. And there you can see, you know, how many different sizes you can do too. So, all right, let me run and get me some buffalo check and then I'm gonna cut me out. I'll just do a uh, eight loop with this. And I'm just gonna cut them at 20 inches long. Four of this and four of the buffalo check. Okay, there you guys, here we go. I decided to make a 10 loop funky bow, and I'm just gonna get us started on this. And I'm gonna measure out five and a half inches, pinch it together, and twist that back tail. I have these strips cut at 20 inches each, and I did not do dovetails on these. Hang on, let me do some dovetails. <laughs> I just fold them all over, cut from the fold down to the edge, and that makes a pretty dovetail. This is not extremely thick, thick, thick ribbon. I wouldn't try this with big, fat ribbon. But... Okie dokie. Now, that's my first one, five and a half inches. Pinching it together and twisting that back tail around. And buffalo check, folding it in half. Five and a half inches, pinching it together. And we're gonna change directions this time. We're gonna point this loop down from center. I'm gonna turn it over so that all the the uh, cardinals are going to be sitting up, although they will get, you know, discombobulated and messed up once we go to fluff. But at least in my mind, they're pointing in the right direction at first. Okay, now 
I'm gonna go ahead and speed through the rest of this. Two up, two down, two up, two down. And I'll come back when I'm fixing to put this, put the tails on. Now, I'm to the point where I'm ready to add these two tails. But I'll tell you one thing that I did with these that I don't normally do or I didn't have to do with that one. For instance, because this, this ribbon has cardinals that are sitting up in one direction, I needed to cut the big loop in half or cut two strips, whatever you wanna do, and make sure that when you attach your tails that your cardinals, or in this case, are gonna be both you know, sitting up. See what I mean? So be aware of that. It's the little things, y'all. It's just the little things that make a difference in crafting, I think, and decorating. You know, I try never to throw anything together really fast. I try to, you know, take my time and, and think about the details and think about how I want things to go together and how they match, you know, and how they, or how they come out, like this, these cardinals. I want them to be you know, not one upside down, but both both headed in the same direction. <laughs> but anyway, here we go. This is the 10 loop funky bow. And let me get to fluff in here and we'll see what we come up with. There we go. Isn't that pretty? Oh my goodness, just a touch of the red. Ugh, I love it. I love it. Okay, I could sit and fool with this all day. I'm gonna stop. Now let me just, okie dokie. Now I think we have a bow extravaganza, right? <laughs> a uh, funky bow, round bow, and tiered bow extravaganza. I'm really happy with how these turned out and I think they're going to really dress up our packages this year and then give a gift with a gift, you know, so some folks can take them home and I'm, I'm super happy with how they all worked out. This is just as cute as a button. Put that on a bag, you know, on a gift bag. But anyway, I hope that y'all were doing okay. I wanted to thank you to pause here and let you know that uh, Chris and I are, are doing okay. Uh, we're, we're getting along, you know. Of course, we still have, uh, you know, waves of sadness that come over us. But, uh, you know, we know we have to walk through those things. And I'm feeling all the feels, you guys. I'm definitely feeling all the feels. So keeping busy helps me, though. Keeping busy you know, when I don't have really quiet or silent times, that's when the, you know, uh, and I think I'm going to repeat these in the, repeat what I just said in the video tomorrow. Wait till you see that video. I'm, that's a bing bang bong all over the place, that video. Wait till you see that. But anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for stopping in here. I wanted to take a moment to thank you guys for all of your comments. I know I've not been able to get back to you. I've just been, as we all are, super duper duper busy. And uh, I tell you, before I even took a peek at the video in the comments this morning, I had 50 or 60 comments already. And I was just like, oh my goodness. Uh, and it just warms my heart that you guys take time out of your busy schedules to watch me and let me keep you company a little while. Maybe while you're wrapping gifts or something like that, you can hear me yammering along in the background or something. <laughs> but thank you all so much for your comments. I take them all straight to my heart and they nestle right in. They nestle right in and that's where they stay and that's where they're cherished all the time, you guys. Honest to goodness. Thank you, too, to all of my new subscribers. I've had many as of late. Thank you guys so much for hitting that subscribe button and for ringing that bell. And, uh, you know, I, I don't normally, I've gone for years and years and haven't asked for subscribers, you all. But then I've been getting, some of you tell me, don't, everybody asks for subscribers. And I know they do. And I know they do. And I just, but I just get feeling a little bit uncomfortable. But I will ask you if you want. 
to subscribe, go ahead, and, go ahead and please subscribe. I'd love to have you join my little YouTube family. And I do feel like we are a family around here. Honest to goodness, I do. So anyway, let me go into my final words. For those of you who don't know or have not heard me uh, say my final words, uh, one day, I don't even know how long it's been now, you guys, for those of you who've been with me, it's been a while, you know, I, I was just, started talking, and I felt like almost, I felt like these words were given to me from above, honest to goodness, I do, I felt like I could almost read them off of a chalkboard, and there are times, especially weeks like this, when I'm a little discombobulated, and my brain is a little bit all over the place, you know, that I may get a word or two mixed up, but the sentiment is the same. This message goes out to all of you who are struggling, especially at this time of year. Uh, so let me just go into them and let me just say that I hope that all is well with everyone. And for those of you who are struggling or suffering with a catastrophic illness or chronic pain, I hope that you have someone there with you, taking care of you, helping you get through each day, making the very, very best out of each day. I hope there's nothing weighing on your mind or your heart, pulling your attention away from where you want it to be or from where it should be. I love y'all to bits, to bits, to bits, hugs all around, and I keep you in my thoughts and my prayers every single day. And I hope y'all aren't getting too stressed out with this with Christmas coming up on us so quick. You know, it's coming up so fast. Time just flies by. I hope that you have uh, time during this uh, Christmas season, holiday season, to spend with those you love and who love you. And uh, that you can get together and just sing carols or sit around and talk or laugh or cry or hug or whatever. Don't forget to tell those that you love that you love them, though, before they leave you again. You never know what could happen. You never know what could happen. So always be sure to tell those you love that you love them. And I love you, all of you. So with all that said, I can yammer along with the best of them, can't I? I'll just say, until next time, y'all take good, good care. Bye-bye.